If you've been working for a bigger organization that ran an agile transformation in the past, well, whether it was FinTech, Telecom or other, you're probably hearing about agile hybrid these days. Everybody seems tired of safe and PI planning and heavy preparations every quarter. And at the same time, those other dreams of the simple scrum team did not seem to have materialized. So basically, organizations have not collected the benefits they expected with their agile transformations. And as you can imagine, they try and find new questions and answers and turn to something new, like what they now call agile hybrid. Now, does that mean that Agile is dead? Is the return of waterfall? Is Agile hybrid or hybrid Agile the same as Scrum Bun? Well, in this video, I will give you an insight on what is the Agile hybrid that everybody's talking about, why it's in everybody's mind these days, and how it can affect your work if you are used to roles such as those found in Scrum. And I will also tell you, why it is a good thing. So what is Agile Hybrid? The way I like to define Agile Hybrid is with the scale tipping between Waterfall and Agile. So you can be on a spectrum. So for example, you might still be collecting all your requirements kind of early on and doing heavy architecture docs in a waterfall way with all those approvals and only after feeding that work to be developed by an agile team. So the dev team works in agile running sprints, having uh, a highly volatile backlog based on what has been considered the mature enough in the analysis stage for development. Then it is possible that the deployment to production phase is still back to waterfall with many gates and approvals. Or it's possible that it's actually there that they use something more like DevOps tipping even more favorably on the agile side of the scale. So it is agile in some parts, but while they use user stories and story points and sprints and Kanban boards, they still use their Gantz charts and do budget projections and rely heavily on certain timelines. While the teams do get to self-organize, let's say the top part, the program, the portfolio is still somewhat rigid and less agile than what you'd expect. That is actually not new. What is new though is this nomenclature, but adopting, let's say, uh, a percentage of agility has been an approach that many organizations have been doing for more than a decade now. This is the moment where I invite you to consider a new name because Agile Hybrid makes it sound weird and half good. Now, what I prefer is entering the world of framework neutral Agile. Basically, it is Agile regardless of the frameworks and it is about integrating practices based on their utility and on your capacity for change. You seek adaptability for your businesses or for your teams, the ways of working, one element element at a time. So for example, you could decide that as a team, you want to use a Kanban board to be more transparent um, on the nature of the work. You get a few resources like my, you know, my three recent videos in, in Kanban that I did recently, and you decide to create a Kanban board with the stages of your team process for development. You change nothing else, just that. Kanban was the set of practices and principles that you will adopt for now in certain parts of your work everything else remains the same for a while. Because now that you use that board, you will be asking yourself a few different questions and new behaviors will then start to emerge. If that is a scenario that you're going through, there are a few things that you can slowly introduce in your Kanban and change behavior positively in your team. And for that, you can get a free resource uh, on Kanban that I, I built a while back and I am linking in the description down below. The point is you don't have to choose between Scrum, Kanban, Scrum, Bun, Safe. You don't have to follow these things to the letter. You can really pick and choose as far as practices go. Here are some other examples to give you a little bit more color. Let's say that a team notices that they spend too much time doing the necessary quality tests for their applications, but they decided to go heavily on test automation. And maybe they even realize that they are going to go, you know, some pipeline and deployment automation so that they could technically do continuous delivery. Those are things that you're going to go and borrow from DevOps practice. You can even go further and shift your quality left, which could be using TDD and bringing testing really to the beginning stages of their software development. Another example could be a team that has a feeling they have lots of things they could be improving, but they have 
no idea where to start. So they start collecting metrics, numbers about their development process. You know, they check defects that escape out in production. They check the efficiency of their processes and cycle time measures for starters. They could even start having satisfaction services around the team every month or so to collect some of those, you know, more human side of statistics every month. Maybe another department decide to have a single backlog that is shared across all teams. And that means that they can centralize the prioritization and the requests and allow for a bigger visibility and the systemic ability to intervene. The lesson here is in framework neutral agile, what you do is that you assess your current ways of working and you see what improvement could benefit you the most. And then you go after the practices that could help you with that. Then you iterate, experimenting on them, learning from the process, not blindly adopting framework just because everybody else seems to be doing it. You probably have an assumption and you're kind of like testing a little bit with this new experiment. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, is this hybrid agile a good idea? Sure, people can interpret hybrid agile or framework neutral agile as a means to stay in waterfall or in any other mechanics where they are far more comfortable. But I'd say framework neutral agile is really a great thing. It's what agile has always been in the end, you know, testing and, and improving slowly but surely. Why do I think this framework neutral hybrid agile, if you will, is a good idea? Because people get to experience the agility that they are ready to embrace. You can't simply force things on people at a volume and speed that they are not yet ready to receive. So what if they want to stay mostly on whatever they call waterfall? I'll tell you this, even waterfall isn't as clear cut as most people like to think. There are practices that people do that are agile, like breaking the scope down and proper user stories. And then there are practices that resemble more waterfall, like looking at a Gantt chart, which is actually as great, uh, is a great tool to showing interdependencies and timeline relationships. The point being, change takes time um, to be desired and to be absorbed. And you should respect that. Otherwise, your change will fail. You should neither change what works nor change more than what your culture and processes can tolerate. You have to go at a pace that is acceptable and iteratively collect the benefits and achieve true long-term addition to the new practices. It is the, the slow and steady, the water that goes breaking down the stone. If you want to know more about the why on pacing change based on the appetite and tolerance for it, I have two videos on the topic of change that you might like to take a look. If you are still not convinced that a framework neutral agile is not a good thing, there is an analogy that I, I like to use and has nothing to do with work. Consider food and health. When people say that you were either agile or not, to me, it's like saying, unless you have a 100% clean diet, eating a little bit more vegetables every day and drinking a little less alcohol has a no impact on your overall long-term health, which we know is false. And in fact, we know that going all in in certain diet changes is really not an option, not for everybody anyway, and not for everything. So it is the same with agile. After all this, you are probably wondering, how will that affect myself as a Scrum Master? Maybe a follow-up question is, without a standard framework, do you still have a place for those roles like a PO or a Scrum Master if people adopt only the practices that make sense for their level of agility? And my answer is yes, you do have a place for those people. Maybe though, the nomenclature will change a little bit, a little lot, but most importantly, we're looking at the set of skills that you have now and they will broaden. The two key benefits that I see for you in your career are one, with a framework neutral approach, you will know several different practices for prioritization, for team enablement, for stakeholder collaboration. Sometimes these will not be specific agility practices like, for example, change management models or design thinking. And you will understand these practices exist and they can support agility in what problem they attempt to solve 
when are they best suited and how to adapt those practices to the reality of your organization. The second one is that you be a more skilled communicator and negotiator because there is so much to understand personalize and influence. And if anything, the work is now more exciting and less of a rinse and repeat, which let's face it, never worked much for people anyway, other than trainers. So agile hybrid is just another buzzword that you don't need to stress about, but the concept behind it is positive, especially if you reframe it as a framework neutral agile. It allows you a lot of latitude as a coach to help people and organizations where they need it most. It definitely opens the door for teams and for whole departments to co-design the next steps with you using their intelligence and your specific knowledge. It is honestly a win-win and you move forward with affinity and the chances of continuous improvement are way bigger. And I hope you use this to your advantage, especially because that means that you don't need specific titles to raise your hand and lead change. So that's it for this video, folks. Thank you so much for watching it to the end. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.